Hi everybody, welcome to the next session on advanced digital signal processing. So far we talked about uniform distributed signals um, like noise and we talked about speech, how to improve um, the sound of quantized speech using um, non-uniform quantization like mu law and a law. Um, there we made um, the SNR more constant over a wider range of amplitudes to make it sound better. So now we basically look at the signal instead and um, see how we can optimize a quantizer for a non-uniformly distributed signal. And um, to deal with this problem we have the um, Lloyd Max quantizer. And for that we can take a look at a typical mixed speech and music file in Python as we can see here. We use ipython minus pylab, type this in a terminal and it opens the interactive mo mode and then we simply import our file using scipy or wav file and we use wav.read to read in our file mixedshort.wav. And next you can see we plot a histogram using the hist function. And the hist function uses our sound file and normalize it to the range between minus 1 and 1. And the next argument, the 50, is the number of bins that it uses. So basically it, um, it uh, subdivides our range from minus 1 to 1 into 50 consecutive bins and for each bin it counts how many times a sample falls into it. Um, yeah, and this is basically then um, a scaled probability density function. So here we can see the result. Basically on vertical axis we have the number of samples that fall into this bin and on the vertical axis you can see the bin boundaries. And we see in the middle is the zero bin, the bin around zero. And that means um, here we see that we get most samples at very small values. And then when we go to higher valued bins, uh, the number of samples declines rapidly. And this is kind of like a Laplace distribution, this peaky distribution. So if we then um, normalize this um, histogram such that the sum over everything becomes 1, then this becomes basically a probability distribution. Right? So we basically we just need to, t uh, to divide it by the total number of samples and then it sums up to 1. Yeah, so this leads to, the I to, I to our idea. Wouldn't it be helpful if we choose our quantization steps smaller where the signal samples appear most often and um, to reduce uh, the quantization error here and make the quantization step size and also the error larger where there are only a few samples. So a larger value might be less harmful if it doesn't appear as often. So this idea is behind the Lloyd Max quantizer and you can read more about it for instance in uh, this book by Jane and Nor about digital coding of waveforms and observe that this is not quite the same as for the mu law compending. There small values get the smallest quantization step sizes. Here the most likely values get the smallest step sizes which is not necessarily the same. Yeah, so this is a type of non-uniform quantizer which is adapted to the signal's PDF. It basically minimizes the expectation of the quantization power which is the expectation of the squared signal or its second moment given the PDF of the signal to quantize. So let's call our quantization function q of x. This is quantization followed by reverse quantization. Basically this is the signal that we have in our decoder. You can think also of non-uniform quantization as first applying this non-linear function then to use an, a uniform quantization. Um, and then do the reverse in the decoder. Then the expectation of our quantization power is simply the expectation of x minus q of x. Right? So q of x is the signal in the decoder, the reconstructed signal, and there will be an error. 
then we take the square to make it always positive. Basically this becomes a power and then we average over it. So observe that we use the square here and not for instance the magnitude of the error because the square leads to an easier solution for our minimum which we would like to find. So this is also important to have something that we can easily solve. So our goal is to minimize this expectation for the quantization error power d. So starting with the PDF of our signal, the result should be our quantization intervals and reconstruction values. Since we now assume non-uniform intervals, we need to give those intervals and the reconstruction values names, which can be seen in the following graphic. So here on the vertical axis, we have the signal value. So basically here we see the bins and we call the decision boundaries where we have the boundaries between the intervals b of k. So here we have b of k, here the previous one, b of k minus 1 and here b of k, k plus 1. And in between we have the reconstruction values which is basically what the decoder needs to reconstruct um, a signal value which we call y, k, or y, k plus 1 for the neighboring intervals. So the encoder knows the b, k and decides in which interval, what we call delta before, the sample lies and assigns the interval index k to it. As before, um, remember only the index k is transmitted to the decoder. So this is uh, that we transmit as before and then the decoder takes this index and assigns the reconstructed value y of k to it, also as before. Except that now for each interval we have a dedicated reconstruction value. So we call bk the decision boundaries in the a to d converter or encoder, where each interval gets an index as before, and on the decoding side, where we have yk as a reconstruction values for each index from the encoding side. In the multidimensional case, they are also called a code word. And this is something that will come up. So using these definitions and the PDF, the measured probability distribution of our signal p of x, we can rewrite our equation for the error power or distribution as you can see here. So here we have um, the distortion, which is the expectation of x minus q of x square. And now we assume that we know the probability distribution of um, x. And then we can compute this expectation using this inter integral over all possible values of this quantization error times the probability of x. Right. So basically this is simply the definition of expectation. We can now subdivide the integral over the quantization intervals assuming we have m quantization intervals by just adding the quantization error power of all the quantization intervals. So basically we take this integral and subdivide it into the corresponding quantization mm -hmm. intervals. You can also see more about it in the Wikipedia page on quantization. So then this integral turns into the sum over smaller integrals. Now the integrals are all just over one um, quantization interval each. But here the argument is still the same. So we, we would now like to have the minimum of this expression for the decision boundaries bk and the reconstruction values yk. Hence we need to take the first derivative of the distortion d with respect to those variables and obtain the zero point where we basically have a vanishing gradient or very va vanishing um, derivative. So let's start with the de decision boundaries bk. So we need to find the point where uh, the derivative of d with respect to bk becomes zero um, because this is a requirement for the minimum. To obtain this derivative, we could first solve the integral over two neighboring quantization intervals because each decision interval bk appears in those two intervals.
one where it is the upper boundary and one where it is the lower boundary. So this can be seen here in the next equation. Here we have the distortion for the case interval and this is the integral over the upper in interval bk to bk plus 1 and here the lower interval from bk minus bk minus 1 to bk. Right. So here we cannot really get a closed form solution for general probability function p of x. Right. It's kind of hard to, to solve. Hence to simplify matters we make the assumption that p of k is approximately constant over our two neighboring quantization intervals. This means we need to assume that our quantization intervals are small in comparison with the changes of p of x. So it's actually kind of a realistic assumption because usually you have relatively small quantization intervals in comparison to the signal. We need to keep this assumption in mind because the derived algorithm is based on this assumption. So hence we can set p of x equals p for each interval. So this p might be different for each interval, but it's the same inside this interval. So using this simplification we can now solve this integral. So then it actually becomes easy when you compare it to our formula here. p of x now becomes p. So that means basically we can uh, keep p outside the integral. And then we just have an integral of this quadratic function. And an integral of a quadratic function is a cubic function with a one-third in front of it. And this is what we can see here. So this is the upper limit of the first integral minus the lower limit. This is the result. And this is the upper interval upper end minus lower end of the integral. And then we put this p on the other side, so we dis uh, divided both sides by p. And here we also see that we need to um, assume that this p is the same on both of these neighboring intervals. So now we have a closed form solution. We can easily uh, take the derivative with respect to bk2, so which only influences dk in d. Um, so hence this, um, these intervals. Hence we can drop the k in the derivative. Right. So here we have this derivative. And basically all what's left from this expression here is those two terms where the bk actually appears. So now we can set it to zero and observe that yk plus 1 must be larger than the lower end of this interval, bk. And we can take the positive square root of both sides. So here we set it to 0. We have this quadratic form. We bring this to the other side. Then we take the square roots and we have this equality here. And then we simply um, bring this yk on the other side and we get this result. And this looks fairly intuitive. This is simply the average between um, the two neighboring reconstruction values. Right? So this means that we put our decision boundaries right in the middle of two reconstruction values. So kind of makes sense. But remember, this is only optimal if you assume that the signal PDF is roughly constant over the two quantization intervals. Right, so this is our assumption now, which actually leads to this result. This approach is also called the nearest neighbor because any signal value or data point is always quantized to the nearest reconstruction value. And this is one important result of this strategy. So now we have the decision boundaries, but we still need the reconstruction values yk right, from our um, optimization. To obtain them, we can again take the derivative of d and set it to zero. Here we cannot start with an assumption of a uniform PDF because we, could we would like to have a dependency on a non-uniform PDF. We'll make this, we couldn't make this assumption before because we only assumed it for the small quantization intervals.
So this can be 